district a few hundred yards from where Bob was brought up and my folk and his parents were very close we were in the same assembly together most of you know Bob with his silver wavy hair but I as a little lad can remember him with his dark wavy hair I sat under his preaching in the children's meeting, Leganil and the Flush <coughs> and Ebenezer. Indeed, it was in 1946, by distinctly in my mind, when I was taken along, I'd heard about missionaries, I'd heard about David Livingstone, and I was taken along to the farewell meeting for Mr. Neal. I can remember very well that evening. Part of the verse that he read that night as he spoke was concerning the experience of the, the elders at, at Ephraim Ephesus. I may never, or I shall never, see your face again. And that was his text, his farewell text. And of course it goes on to say that from that experience with Paul, they then led him to the ship. Well, sometime after that, I think it was probably a few days or a week, we all went down to the docks in Belfast, and I was lifted up with the shoulders of one of the brethren to see over the great crowd of people that was there to say goodbye to Mr. Geddes and his army, his army of missionary soldiers. Bob always laughed as he would tell us to how that the missionaries, they all went out believing and trusting in God, but on the advice of Mr. Geddes, they all had to take their gun with them. And so on board the boat that night, there were boxes of ammunition and guns taking, take, taken on board. <coughs> In this country, I came into contact with Mr. Neal, I think it was 1969 or 70, when the family were coming and going to from Zambia home and Peter was in a very, very poor condition. Very, very ill. 
And I remember going up to the little residential place in the garden. And as Bob and I were sitting talking, a man came into the company. And he said, Bob says to me, he says, just hold on a minute. And he called this man over. He says, tell me, sir, are you born again? Now that was typical of Bob. I got a bit of a shock. The man was a stranger. But I learned something from him, and I learned many things over the years. When they came down from Zambia to Port Elizabeth, I was very close to the boys and to Bob and Esme, and I'm very thankful for the kindness and love that was bestowed upon me. And indeed, I think Bob at times thought that I was his son. And uh, sometimes the way he used to speak to me, I, I, I think he... He, 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 he forgot that I was a, uh, was not blood with his relative, but he was, a, he was a kindly man and very helpful and very good. He taught me many things. At least he tried to teach me many things, but I think I was a bad pupil. But I'm glad to say that as we're here, I was here, I was there, when he went out at the start of his work I'm glad to be here as his work has come to an end when you say farewell Bob thank you for everything we'll see you in the glory one other thing I must do I think this is a fitting occasion for it I made a promise to him a number of years ago. He came to visit me when I was in my flat on the Cape Road. And I've been clearing out stuff and things. And I had some handkerchiefs. And I brought these handkerchiefs out and I showed them to Bob. I said, Bob, you see those? He says, yes. I said, you know who gave me these? He says, I don't know. I says, your mother gave them to me in 1968 when I was leaving to come to Africa, to South Africa. He says, what are you going to do with them? I says, well, I've kept them up to now. But I says, I would like them to, I would like them to be kept safe indefinitely. I says, I was thinking of giving them to the boys one each silk handkerchief so that they in turn could preserve them from their grandmother as a family heirloom and you can pass them on to your eldest boys in perpetuity you can take the Pokemon and split them between the two